Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Calls for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Cause Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger Interposed His precious blood To grace, how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let your goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love is my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above, thy courts above. My heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Jesus is real I know he rose from the dead and with all power he heals and whatever I need it's in his hand I believe he can raise the dead I know he's coming back again like the Bible says I believe and there's no doubt in my mind I know you're supposed to love the people on this earth But overloaded with sin, my soul is drowning deep in hurt So take control of my life, I want you to be a part But the question that I have, oh Lord, 
it, will you take my heart? I want to open up my heart and give you what's inside, but I'm afraid that all I have is lust, mistrust, and pride. Everything in me right now is not like you And some days, Lord, I pray that I can turn the hands of time How sweet would it be if I could just press the wine So here I stand, a broken man, and I can get a brand new start But the question that I have, oh Lord, is will you take my Will you take my heart? cry at night I understand what you need and don't you know that's why I die and rose with power in my hands there may be some days where you may think it's best to quit and you may feel amazed since you didn't meet my requisite but I'll stand by your side and I'll be sure you go unmarked So the answer to your question is Yes, I'll take your heart Hey, yes, I'll take your heart
Touch each and every one of us in here, Father God. We ask, Lord, that you bless this service, Father God. Bless those that are here, Father God. And that you continue to be with us throughout this service, Father God. For it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. We trust in you, Lord. And we know that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask to think through the power that worketh in us in Jesus Christ, Father God. And we give you glory and honor as you bless this, this place, Father God. Increase it, Father God. Have your way. Let your Holy Spirit fall fresh. Right now, in the majesty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, these are the things we ask of you, Lord. That you would have your way on this day and move by your Spirit, as you always do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Falling in love with Jesus. 
And if this is your first time worshiping with us, please drop your name in the chat. Let us know where you are because we do want to make sure that we extend a warm welcome to you. So let us know that you're there. And if you like the worship service again, click that like. And most importantly, come back and worship with us again because we would love to have you join, love having you join us in this worship experience. I want to thank all of our members who came out last week. I am so grateful they came out to show up and support the work that God has commissioned us to do. Again, I've been talking about the alien works of God in the midst of this pandemic. And one of them is the pushing us out the door to work in the community. Something that I had been saying, God told me that is what we needed to do when he sent me here in 2018. And I told y'all a couple of weeks ago, I didn't know how we were going to do it. I just know God said to say to do it. And sure enough, he has brought it to pass. And we now see with our work in fighting COVID in our community, God is just using us. And so I want to thank everyone who has come out to help us do the work that God has commissioned us to do as we worship God through our ministry to God's people in our community, living out the testimony and the work of Isaiah 58. But today, today we are going to hear from one of the stalwart, I think probably a founder of, uh, or early, early members of Saunders Memorial Church. And it just so happens that he is celebrating his 90th birthday. Amen. Amen. And so right now you are going to hear from Brother John Bowen as he shares with us how and why he decided to get vaccinated. And I also told him that, hey, he's 90 years old. He can take per personal privilege and tell us anything that he, any share with us, any wisdom that he wants to share. God bless you, Brother Bowen. Thank you, and before I get to it, I just like to lift up one word that the, uh, the Reverend just said about what God can do. Look at this face, man. Look at this face. God can do things. Yes. I'm here to, to thank God over and over for my 90th birthday. Yes. And yes. I saw it in all kinds of times. I've been all my life. And right now, I guess I'm, I'm kind of lost for words to say. I'm just so uh, overwhelmed. But I'd like to say one word, one number, two words, and just a few words about the COVID, COVID disease. I listen to the news quite a bit every day. That's all I've got to do. And I've been listening to a reason for not taking vaccines. I can't think of them. All the medical professionals can't think of them. They, they give the best, but I've listened to one patient guy, Dr. Fossey. Dr. Fossey, every day I listen to him and give the reason why he slept with the, the uh, uh, body. Dr. Fossey, he's the director of, uh, I can't think of, but he's the director of, uh, of uh, NIA. NIA. He's the director of NIA, and I pay close attention to Dr. Fossey and the reason for taking the class because in my own opinion, I can't see no reason to not want to take uh, anything to help or cure or slow down the spread of the disease like virus. Yes. And I've been, I've been enjoying, I, I just, I don't know what to say, I've enjoyed being home today. I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you very much. Amen. And thank God for this night and Thursday. Right mind yeah. and looking good too. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So we are so thankful, thankful to you, Brother Bowen, for coming to share your wisdom. And like he said, come on, y'all, listen to the medical experts. As I shared last week, the post that uh, Dr. Omita Caldwell had shared, she said, if you disagree with the scientists and you are about science and you are not a scientist, let me start that over again. If you disagree, if you are not a scientist and you disagree with a scientist about science, it's not a disagreement. You're just wrong. Okay? <laughs> because scientists know science. So we have got to do our part, each of our part, because as I've also shared, getting vaccinated isn't just about us. That's right. It's about sharing, I mean, saving and protecting our community. So come on, y'all, let's get rid of that name and spirit. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and listen to one of my uh, prior two sermons. I got two sermons out there on the name and spirit. Amen. And go out there, but well, let's get rid of that name and spirit so that we can get back, not life as it used to be, because there's some stuff that God had for us, as I've shared through this Noah experience. Again, go out there and check out my series on the Noah experience. But in this Noah experience, there are some lessons that God has for us. And I submit we're still here because we ain't learned them well, okay? So let's go ahead, let's do the work, make sure that we're taking the time to understand what God has uh, uh, requires of us and to take the necessary steps to protect not only ourselves, but our families, our churches, our community, and our world. Amen. Amen. And so with that, I am going to call on uh, Sister Denise to come and lift up our giving. Um, and then following Sister Denise, we will hear from the other Reverend Rutledge, the Reverend Gail Rutledge, who will lift up our prayer. Also, all the way from Washington, D.C. and Triumph. Um, and as she's lifting up prayers, I am asking a special prayer for my cousin, Ricky Wright, his son, Justin, and his parents, my Aunt Burnell and Uncle Wright. Now, Aunt Burnell and Uncle Wright are with us every week um, out of Maryland, uh, but uh, do, do keep them in prayer um, and lift them up and just pray God's peace and comfort uh, surrounds them during this challenging time that they're going through in this time. And so, uh, Sister Denise will come and lift up our offering. Hi, everyone. Back to the part where everybody can, can... Hold on for a minute. The Holy Spirit is just speaking to me right now. All right. It's just saying, slow down. Mm. The Holy yeah. Spirit is saying, slow down. Thank you, Lord. We're pushing too hard. He's got mm. Mm. Slow down. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we come to the part of our service where everybody can give. Our God is a giving God. He gives every day, all day. He gives 24, 24, 36, 65, all the time. He's just giving all the time. Yes, yes. And he gives to us so we can give back. Yes. So now is the time for us to give. Um, we thank all our givers, our committed givers, our, our friendly givers, our supporting givers. We thank God for all of you, but God thanks you for giving. And as you grow in your spiritual walk, you'll grow in your giving. Yes. yes. And it'll get easier to give. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. then you start to realize that it's not yours anyway. Ah, all right. So and that God continues to bless you. You'll always have enough. <laughs> you'll always have enough yes. to give. So at this time, you know that you can give. You can come by the church. You can give a Give a five. Give a five. I often say Wi-Fi. 
You can give, you can give, you can mail it to us, and just know that we use it to the glorification of God's kingdom, and we use it to work in our community, and we use it to show that God is a giving God. So again, we thank you all. Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts this morning for everything you do to for us, for everything that you give us, for all the things you give us that we just take for granted. We say hallelujah, thank you. We thank you for the givers. We thank you for those that give more than they have. Father, we thank you for our tithing. We thank you for the good examples that we have here of givers. Yes, yes. So Lord, just grant us with the knowledge to use our givings and everything that's given to us to the best of your kingdom, to what you would have us to do. We thank you for everything. And again, we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah and amen. 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 Jesus Christ is Lord, then ye shall be saved. Hmm. It's just, it's, Jesus is as close to you as your mouth is to your heart. Hmm. And I want everyone out there to just close your eyes and pray with me. Heavenly Father, and repeat after me, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe, God, that you were bruised and beaten for me. I believe, God, that you were bruised and beaten for me. And then, God, I believe that three days later, you rose. You died and you rose for me, God. I believe that three days later, you died and you rose for me, God. God, I thank you. God, thank you. That you did it for me, God. That you did it for me, God. God, that's love. That's the epitome of love. God, that is love. That is love. Now, if you believe that, you are now saved. You're saved, and no one can take you out of his clutches now. Out of the clutches of the enemy, you're saved forever. And I ask that you walk in the confidence mm. of the love of Jesus Christ in your heart. Yes. Because your life will never be the same. Yes. Never be the same. He will change the trajectory of your life. Yes. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you for just saving us, God. We thank you, God, because you loved us that much and that you chose us, God, to be your own God. God, we ask that you'll continue to grow us in your word, God, as we, God, each and every day study your word, God, and get to know your word, God, and let that word become a part of us. God, we love you, we glorify you, and we'll be so ever careful to give you all honor and glory. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
drawing them in closer relationship with you and giving them a greater understanding of you and of themselves as created by you. This is the prayer that I lift in Jesus' name. Amen. The myth of the sacred and secular divide. Well, as we come to another communion Sunday, typically the one Sunday of all Sundays that people place the most importance and significance upon, it is the one Sunday that you just could not miss church. And for some reason, it was the only time that some people even went to church, got to go get communion. But why? Why press to make it to the church house? For communion when you aren't going to bother to go any other Sunday or Wednesday or Tuesday or whatever day. What's the point of communion if you aren't going to meditate on God, talk to God, listen to God, or even think about God until the next Sunday that you're in church? Which again, for some of you might not be until communion Sunday. And so how is it that Christians can be all holy and sanctimonious one day and the next be like Peter denying Christ through their behavior. How is it that we could have a time in the time past, and I don't know, we might even have it today, where the head of the Ku Klux Klan could hang a man on Saturday night and be sitting on the deacon's row in church on Sunday morning. <laughs> but unless we all as black people get all sanctimonious, how is it that all black folk, we could be all up in the juke joint, did not groove on, listening to a brother or sister sing the blues, bebop or jazz, and then on Saturday night, on, on Saturday night, and then on Sunday morning, turn our nose up at them when they try to come into the church house to praise God. Or heaven forbid, they, someone starts out singing in the gospel uh, music, in ministry and then ventures out into R&B. Oh my gosh, you know, we will actually go so far as to excommunicate them from the church. Mm -hmm. How is that? How do we do that? Well, sadly, I submit that that's just the schizophrenic, bipolar nature of many people's Christianity. All holier than thou and sanctimonious whenever they walk into the church house, but a poor pure hellraiser when they walk out the church house. You know, God and their religion get checked at the door on the way out and then picked up again the next time they return. And sometimes God doesn't even get picked up on the way back into the church because we done heard some stories, y'all, about folks cutting up in the church house. And see, I believe this is one of the reasons God allowed the pandemic to shut the doors of all the churches. Because it forced us to realize that, one, we didn't need to be in the church house to connect with God or to worship God. And then it taught us also that God was calling us to do more than then sit, as we said in Isaiah 58, and sit up in the church house studying him. God wants us out in the community serving the needs of his people. But we should have been and should be connecting with God everywhere we go. God should be intertwined in our daily existence. Not an hour should go by in our lives without God being in the forefront of our consciousness. But instead, we act bipolar. We'll give God some thought while we in church, but he is out of sight and out of mind everywhere else we go. We become the Christian version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We show up one way in church and completely different everywhere else. And see, this, this is the myth of the sacred-secular divide, and it's a myth that blocks our ability to see or understand our spiritual gifts, and it has even caused some of us to miss our callings. In fact, many of us don't even know the call on our lives because the sacred-secular divide has skewed our view on how we see our careers. In fact, many people walk around thinking that only ministers have a call on their lives. Mm -hmm. Not. Each and every one of us, God has given gifts to us, and these gifts are in, to be used for the fulfillment of God's kingdom. It's a call on our lives. 
We just simply need to discern what those gifts are and how God wants us to use them for the glorification of his kingdom. And that doesn't mean just in the church, but outside in the world at large. But the myth of the sacred and sacredly divide has prevented many of us from walking in the fullness of our gifting and calling. It has blocked us from fulfilling our purpose, and it has caused us even to miss the move of the hand of God in our lives. See, Martin Luther said that there is no difference among um, the clergy and the non-clergy except that of office. And he indicates that the clergy, they can anoint, the clergy may be able to consecrate, but the clergy cannot make a person a Christian. <laughs> All a clergy can do and likely will do is make a person a hypocrite, a humbug, or a blockhead. <laughs> and that's what Martin Luther said hundreds of years ago. And see, in the myth of the sacred secular divide, again, Martin Luther says, is a piece of deceit and hypocrisy because all Christians are truly of the spiritual estate. And then theologian Charles Spurgeon put it this way, to a person who lives unto God, nothing is secular. Everything is sacred. This person puts on his workday garment and it is a vestment to him or her. He sits down to his meal and it is a sacrament. This person who lives unto God, goes forth to his labor and then exercises in his labor the office of the priesthood. And see, it doesn't matter what job, position, or title we have. If God is in it and if we live as God would have us live our labor, whatever it is, it is holy and it is a living sacrifice unto God. We must live in a way that enables the sacred to absorb the secular. Hmm. See, just this past week, um, in my law practice, I got a call from a man um, who was a new legal client who was referred to me. And the gentleman said, um, well, the individual he said referred him, I had no recollection of. When he mentioned the name, I just drew a complete blank. I had never heard the name before. But the way the man talked, the person that referred him clearly knew me and thought, well, made the individual think that he knew me. And so I didn't want to embarrass the person, even though I had no idea who he was. And so after asking a few questions, trying to identify who the referrer was without acting as clueless as I actually was, I gave up and was just like, oh, yes, okay, okay, yeah, even though I had no idea who it was. So I continued on with my consultation. And as I'm giving legal consult, legal advice, I realized that this gentleman, he could also use some spiritual counsel, which I gave. And the man was deeply grateful and gave thanks. And we ended our consultation. But then at the end of the consultation, I'm still trying to figure out who referred this gentleman to me. And so investigator Joe Lynn pops out to the rescue. And so I pull out my best investigative tool, it's called Google search. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and voila, the name pops up and it turns out the person who I've not yet met but will soon be meeting is the pastor of Mosaic Church here in Midtown Detroit. And in checking that brother out, I was led to one of his sermons, a wonderful message titled Talented or Spiritually Gifted which not only served as inspiration for today's message, it affirmed my personal journey and it has provided me with rich nuggets that I will be sharing with you in the future because they underscore my belief that I, all the gifts needed to enable our church to flourish and fulfill its mission, all that we need was sitting in our hard pews, but is now sitting in our virtual pews. They just need to discern those gifts and join with us on this journey. So now, here I am on my paying gig, giving spiritual counsel in the midst of legal counsel, and then being blessed myself with spiritual counsel and giving inspiration for not just one sermon, but for a couple of sermons. And it's all in a day's work, as they say. Yes, 
I was able to be a spiritual blessing and was spiritually blessed all because I did not allow the myth of the secular sacred divide to cause me to miss the move of God in the midst. Hey, I was sitting up in my law office. I wasn't in the church office. I wasn't even in the church. I was in my law office, but God was there with me, making a way, doing things, and shifting the atmosphere. And we will miss that if we walk around with a sacred, secular, divine mindset. And so you might ask then, so how? How do we live without a sacred, sacred, sacred and secular mindset? How do we live with lives that are holy, sacred? Well, first, and I'm going to be real quick because it's simple. All you have to do is live in communion with God. And not just come to church on first Sunday to take communion with God. You see, our relationship with God has to go far deeper than a ritualistic drinking of wine and eating of bread. We have got to go deep. We have got to go deep so that we can know ourselves as known by God and so that we can know God even better. And see, in the communing with God, we must seek discernment of the unique God gift God has already instilled in us. And remember that we are to use those gifts to the glorification of God because we are part of the royal priesthood. And using our gifts to the glorification of God doesn't mean, again, just using them in the church house. My brother just sang us. Oh, my gosh, he just blessed us with his song. And intentionally, I asked him if we heard the jazziness of the songs. Well, there was a time where the mothers would have been clutching their pearls had he been singing that jazzy song up in the air. But that jazzy song, that jazzy melody, all of it, the rap, the bebop, the step, all of it belongs to God and can be used to the glorification of God in the church and outside of the church. And finally, we must simply remember that Everything, everything belongs to God. And God isn't just limited to the four walls of the church. God is in our homes. God should be on our jobs. God should be in all the places where we play. Because God is everywhere. It is simply up to us to seek him and try not to hide from him. So tomorrow morning, when you rise up, Act like you're going to church. Put that mindset in your head that you are joining in communion with God and then cultivate that mindset so that you can treat your job as an act of worship unto God because when you are walking in your purpose, when you are walking in the gifting that God has given you, then you are fully walking in his purpose. Whether you're using those gifts within the church or on your job, but just keep God at the forefront. And remember always that as creatures and creations of God, we are sacred beings being charged with loving God, with all our heart, not just on Sundays, but every day. With loving God, with all our mind, whether we're listening to gospel or rap music, and loving God with all our soul to the depths of our very being. For it is in Christ that we live and move and have our being. There is no sacred or secular divide. We are fully sacred. And let's walk in that sacredness in communion with Christ right now. Amen. Amen. Well, I would be difficult to tell you to get your communion elements together, but y'all knew it was first Sunday, so I'm hoping that you already have them. You have your bread and your, your wine, your water, and if, I mean, if it is really wine, y'all, come on, just a little bit, just a little bit of that wine. And so prepare your elements as I begin the consecration. Almighty God, for your tender mercy to give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, 
who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and who did institute and command us to continue this ritual as a symbol of a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. And let it today serve as a memory, as a reminder that we are sacred beings who are charged with being in communion with Christ. In the same night that he was portrayed, Christ took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. His body. I feast on it in my heart, committing to join in communion with Christ, not just today, but every day, so that I may walk in the fullness of all God has for me. His blood shed for the remission of sins, I drink it. With a grateful heart, giving God all of the honor and the glory for the gifts that he has instilled in me and for the work that he has purposed for me and for you and for us. Amen. Amen. Let's close prayer. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, are grateful for your goodness and your mercy. And we pray that you will accept our sacrifice of, of praise and thanksgiving and the taking of your communion as our commitment to discern the shift that you desire for each of us individually and together as the body of faith, all in this season of shifting. And we offer and present ourselves our souls, our bodies, our hearts, and our minds to be reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice to you, God, realizing that there is no sacred, secular divide. And so we humbly ask that we may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction and the unity of the Holy Spirit, giving all honor, all glory to you, God Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to extend to you an invitation, but actually my sister already did it, Reverend Gail. She already invited you the and extended to you the opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation. So if you happen to pray that prayer with her today, please be sure to drop your name in the chat if you are praying, praying that prayer for the first time. Drop your name in the chat because as she said, it means you have been saved. And if you have been saved, we want to make sure that we are able to welcome you into God's kingdom. So come on, if you prayed that prayer, or if you have not yet prayed that prayer, pray it now. And then we will certainly welcome you into the community of faith. But maybe you have already confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but somehow don't have a church home where you're able to work out your soul's salvation. Well, we extend an invitation for you to come and join us here at Saunders and Allen, where we are journeying in relationship with Christ. We are endeavoring to do the work that God has commissioned and called us to do. We don't profess to have all the answers. We don't profess to know everything or have everything right. But what we do know is that we are keeping our eye focused on Christ so that we can join Christ where Christ is working so that we may be his vessel, his heart, his eyes, and his ears here on earth. And we would love to have you come and join us on this journey. So you got two invitations. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ, or if you accepted Jesus Christ with Sister Reverend Gail Rutledge earlier, please drop your name in the chat. 
but or if you have already accepted Jesus Christ but you have not do not have a church home we would love to have you come join us and again drop your name in the chat and hey the beauty of this virtual worship experience is we don't care where you are if you want to be a part of this ministry just go ahead and join whether you're in Alabama Cincinnati LA no matter where you Come and join with us, and we will be ever, ever grateful to have you as part of our family and community of faith. Amen. Well, as always, we come to the end of another worship experience and to the beginning of a brand new week. And so as we close out, as always, I leave you with a prayer for the week. My prayer for you this week is that the communion you just received will be a symbol of your commitment to commune with God daily and that it will not just be an empty ritual. I pray you will not allow the myth of a sacred, secular divide to block you from seeing and using your own God-given gifts. And I pray that you will realize that you are part of the royal priesthood and that you are fully sacred and called of God. God bless you. Have a wonderfully blessed week and a wonderfully blessed Labor